obviously Netflix has seen a surge in activity during the pandemic. They've had hits like Tiger King, of course, season three of Ozark. Um, but at the same time, they have nothing in production right now. So I wonder what you think about Netflix's outlook, longer term pandemic. They've got a very big library. And this pandemic favors those who have a library because the audience is going to run through that very quickly. Um, it, it's the smaller services that don't have either originals or very much of a library, like Peacock is in that problem. Um, HBO Max is going to have trouble because they just haven't stockpiled a lot of originals and they don't have a really vast library. So I think for now, the two giants, Netflix and Disney Plus, are in a decent position. Um, and it will, it, it, it's a sort of a, a, an acceleration of a trend that I always thought was gonna take place, which is that all of these streaming efforts were gonna settle out into two dominant players, Netflix and Disney Plus, with the others realizing at some point sooner or later that they were better off being suppliers to those other platforms. This may accelerate that whole process because there's not a lot of wiggle room. There's, there's just not a lot of you know, slack in the line for, for the also ranks. So there's gonna be some shaking out, if you will. Some of these streaming services just won't survive, potentially? I think, they'll, I think they'll all give themselves a little time, but they won't have as much time as they might have originally thought mm -hmm. they would have. Now, an interesting. interesting player in that regard is Quibi, which has all originals stockpiled for what they thought was going to be about a six month duration before they then replenish. Um, if they get their Tiger King, then they'd be in a very nice position and we'll see whether, whether, whether they've got that. But it's going, to, it's going to affect consumption. In other words, the audience is going to be devouring much more of this content than people expected. So we'll see how quickly Quibi runs through their stockpile of originals before they have to replenish. Well, and I wonder, they don't seem to have had a breakout hit yet. And we've talked to Meg Whitman, Jeffrey Katzenberg a few times uh, in the last few weeks. They had, you know, 1.7 million downloads the first week, really good numbers. And then it seems that those numbers have fallen off, at least according to the data that we have access to. So, you know, what's your outlook there, given that they're spending $125,000 a minute on this content? Yeah, they, and as a producer, I like that they're doing that. but. Um, they, if they haven't already uh, blown their entire stockpile of originals, then they might find their hit at any point. So this is all a, a hit-driven, you know, with originals, it's all about hit-driven. And so, um, you know, they, they may pull a Tiger King out of their pocket, in which case they'd be in a nice position. They also have to learn a lot about audience habits. So you know, they're really starting from scratch. They do have some deep pockets. They did raise a lot of money, even though they're spending a ton of money. So they have the wherewithal to ride this out for a little bit. Uh, the, the more data they can accumulate about who is using what parts of their content and in what ways, the better off they're going to be. Because, of course, their original premise that Gen Zers on the move would be watching this, it, it forces them into, into recalibrating that. Uh, but I noticed my Gen Zers watching, you know, happy to watch, just sitting on their phones, uh, stationary. So they, that, that it, it'll just be interesting to see how they adapt to the new circumstances. And they're smart people, and, they, and you know, I would predict that they can do that.